Hi, this is Rachel, and this is topic 20 of our supervision curriculum series. And today we're going to be talking about progress monitoring. So we have conducted an assessment. We have identified areas of, of support need, and we've written treatment plan uh, with goals and very specific um, measurement and teaching procedures for those goals. So now, what do we do with that data? Well, we need to graph that data. We need to be analyzing that data. So not just filing in a way or taking data for data's sake, but to actually use that data to make data-based decisions about what we should change in our teaching procedures um, in order to better support the learner. So um, when we look at a graph, we use visual inspection and we are going to look at three things, level, trend, and variability. So level is going to describe um, kind of like the, the average. Um, so before um, an intervention during baseline, it might have a low level. So in this graph, um, between like zero and 10%. And then after intervention or during teaching, you see that level has increased. And now um, it's between a 60 and 80%. So in this case, um, this is an example of a change in level. Um, the range is still about the same, which is variability. The variability is about the same. There's not, it's not trending in a certain direction. Um, so it's stable, it's flat, but there is a difference in level. So whatever this intervention was, uh, resulted in a change in level. A uh, trend is going to be sort of the direction of the data points on the graph. So um, uh, it could be descending or ascending, and it just means that the, the data points are going sort of in a direction, a trend line. So in this example here, we have a decreasing trend during baseline. Then there's the intervention, and then we have an increasing trend. So whatever the intervention was, it resulted in the data changing from a decreasing trend to an increasing trend. Um, the last one we talk about is variability. So variability is going to be about the range of the data points in a graph. So you might have a very high range. There's a lot of variability, or you might have a low, uh, ver or not a lot of variability, low variability, because the range is pretty tight. So in this graphic example, um, we have a lot of variability. The data points points range from 20% to 80%. Um, and then after the intervention, all of the data points are pretty close to 60%. So whatever this intervention was, it reduced the variability from a lot of variability to low variability. Now, the reason we look at these things, level, trend, and variability, is so we can determine did the intervention do anything? Did the intervention have an effect on this behavior. Um, we look at three different things because it could change in those three different ways. It might only change the level or only change the trend or only change the variability, or it could change a combination of those things. Um, so we want to have those in mind when we look at graphs. So we also want to make sure that we are continuing to take data on those like generalization and maintenance or future steps goals. So this would be an example of a program where um, identified in baseline, the learner was unable to perform the skill, um, a condition line was put in place, there was a teaching procedure. And we see now that we have an increasing trend um, and it comes up and we've got the last three data points, 80, 95, and 100%. Then there's a condition line change. So we changed something. So this was receptive field in a field of two. Now we're moving to a field of three. And we see initially there is a decrease in level. 
right? Because we went from 100% down to 60%. But we also have this condition line change here that we know we changed something. We made it a little bit harder um, because we want the learner to scan more items. Um, and we look and we see that the trend is still an upward trend if we get some data points. And then the last three data points are above 90%. So then we've got another condition line where now we go to a receptive field of six. So we've increased the field for this learner. Um, again, we see an initial decrease in level, but we still have an increasing trend. And this continues. We have a little bit of a dip and a bit more variability. Um, but overall, the trend is still increasing, and eventually we get to three data points above 90%, where presumably maybe this skill is mastered, um, and we move it to a maintenance category. So when we're taking our data, we want to be looking at our graphs, and we want to look at graphs frequently, um, if possible, every single day. That may not be possible, right? So um before i used electronic data collection systems we graphed things by hand but we also taught the technicians to look at the graph so as they are graphing it at the end of their session or at the end of their day they're graphing their data and we taught them to look and to notify us if certain things were happening if it's three days above 80 percent let the consultant know if it's a, a very low data point or if the last three data points are trending down and this is a skill increase program, then let us know, let the consultant know. So we did effectively have somebody looking at the data every day and then notifying the consultant. So that's an option. Um, if daily is not an option as frequently as possible. So maybe at the end of the week, you're looking at all the graphs for that learner. Um, if you have team meetings, which we will talk about in a future topic here, um, topic 25 is where we talk about team meetings and managing the team. Um, if you have team meetings, then you're looking at the data at every team meeting. So that might be every week or every couple weeks. Um, if you're using electronic data collection uh, systems, they often have notification alerts that you can turn on so that you can be notified when certain criteria are met, such as this is moving in the wrong direction or it's met mastery criteria. Some of those may have the ability to program the next step. So something like this, where when it's mastered in a field of two, then move to a field of three, then move to a field of six, like it might be able to move the data collection on and notify the team to make sure that they all are aware of those. So there are some benefits to the electronic data collection systems that we have available now. Um, but you want to be looking at this data as often as possible. If you file it away or it gets graphed, but nobody looks at it and sits there for a month or longer, um, like what if the learner mastered everything at two weeks? You've been wasting the learner's time. Or what if it's not working? What if it's making things worse? And now you are hurting the individual because you didn't look at the data to see that this is not improving the situation. We need to be checking the data as often as possible. Um, so figure out how to make that work. Now, what if the data, what if it isn't working, right? What if you're looking at your data and this program is not moving in the direction that you want it to. So it's supposed to increase, but the data is not increasing. It's supposed to decrease, but the data is not decreasing. Like whatever it is, it's not doing what you wanted it to do. There are many things that you can check. This is the particular order that I go in. Um, I've seen a few variations, but I haven't seen anything that's not included, just maybe a variation in the order in which people approach this. So this is the order in which I look at things. If I'm not seeing the, the when I'm analyzing the data, I'm not seeing the, the program or the, the skill move in the direction that, um, I'm not seeing progress, right? I'm not seeing the, the data show progress. The first thing 
is I'm going to do um, inner observer agreement. So I am going to make sure that we are taking data on the same thing. Um, so I'm going to watch and I'm going to take data at the same time, because if the data is saying we're not making progress, but the data is not being collected correctly, then I can't do anything with that data, right? Like I, I need to know that I'm trusting the data. So the first thing I look at is, is the data, are, are we all counting the same thing? Do we have good IOA, inner observer agreement? If we do, well, if we don't, we fix that and we get real data and then we can see is there even a real problem? Because if our data was wrong and it wasn't showing the progress, but now our data is right, it might show the progress. Um, the second thing is I check fidelity. And um, the next topic, 21, we're gonna talk about how to maintain fidelity. But if the data is not going in the direction that I expect, and I know the data is accurate, then the next thing I'm gonna look at is seeing if the program is being implemented as it's written. And this is why when we write our programs, it's super helpful to have really detailed program description, teaching plan, reinforcement strategies, prompting, fading, measurement, all of this really spelled out so that we can all go back, we can look, and I can say, are you implementing this the way it's supposed to be done? Is it being implemented according to the protocol? If my teaching plan, my teaching procedure has room for variability, then that could explain why people might be doing things differently and why we might not be seeing progress for the learner. So I'm going to check the fidelity. Is it being implemented the way it was written? Because again, if the program's not being run the way it was written, then it's not necessarily the pr problem with the program. Um, it's, it's the problem with what's being done is why the data is not um, being supported or moving in the right direction, why we're not seeing progress. So those are the first two things I check. Oftentimes, um, I do both of those at the same time by going in to um, observe the learner, working with whoever they're normally working with, but observing the learner um, running or practicing that skill. The third thing, is reinforcer assessment. Do we have an actual reinforcer? Um, is the learner uh, receiving that reinforcer contingent upon the skill that we are trying to increase? Um, sometimes they're, you know, the learner's not interested in what's being used, so it's not a reinforcer. Um, so we need to go back, we need to do more preference assessments, we need to do a better job of identifying a reinforcer and responding to the learner when they show us that they're no longer interested um, in something. Um, you also want to look at the schedule of reinforcement um, is the item or the activity is the reinforcer being delivered when it's supposed to be delivered is it too thin a schedule of reinforcement um, does it need to be a more dense schedule of reinforcement um, timing of the reinforcer all of these things play into um, you know are we see why we might not be seeing an increase so we're taking the data that i can trust the data the program's being run the way it's supposed to. Do we have a reinforcer, right? Are we actually doing, are we actually using reinforcement? Are we timing it right? Are we using the right things? Um, okay, so then if all of those are correct, then I may wanna go back and reassess the prerequisites. Is my learner really ready for this skill? Did I miss something in the assessment? Did I identify the wrong goal? is this what we should be working on right now? If it is, then that's when I would look at reworking that teaching plan. So, so far, nothing has changed in the teaching plan. We're problem solving around to see if there are other things um, that are interfering with the progress. At this point, if none of those other things are interfering with the progress, then I'm looking at reworking the program. And there are basically three main components to that. The first one is looking at barriers in the environment. So are there barriers in the environment that are preventing this program from being successful, 
that are creating barriers um, to being able to learn this skill in this way. Um, it could be that the environmental expectations on the caregivers or the providers are such that this program's not being run frequently. So we're not having a lot of opportunities. Um, it could be that there are factors in the environment that uh, create extra distractions or um, interfere with the learner's ability to focus on a particular program. So look and see, are there barriers? Of what can we do about those barriers? Can we address the barriers or do we need to change the program to suit the reality of the environment, right? We can't, we can't always have perfect environments. So what can we do to make this uh, program uh, work better in the environment that we're given? Um, this is also sort of be here. This is also where you go back and you check the literature, right? What other strategies have been used to help teach this? Um, what other components could I introduce? Because presumably I checked the literature and I found a, a way to address it. But if that way doesn't work, what are the other ways that are evidence-based that we could approach um, this particular skill? And then uh, the third one, assess the prompting and prompt fading strategies. Maybe the supports that I'm using are not the appropriate supports for this learner, for this skill. What else could I do to support this learner? Or maybe the supports are fine, but then I can't fade it out. So the learner is not able to be more independent. So what fading strategy should I use? What would be a more appropriate fading strategy for this learner, for this skill. Um, so taking all of those things, like I said, this is sort of the order that I go through them when I'm problem solving, if uh, my learner is not making progress. Um, but uh, these are the components. I've seen them done in a, in a few different orders, but, um, but these are the components that you want to look at. So uh, for the assignment, um, if you are working with a learner um, and you have data from the programs that you have written and implemented, that's what we want you to look at, right? I want you to analyze the data that you're collecting from the programs that you wrote, that you developed from the assessment, right? Let's, let's connect all these dots here. If you don't have that opportunity, but you do have access to real life data for a learner, then that's the data that you want to analyze. Um, if you don't have any of those things, then there are graphs down here below that you can discuss and, and look through and identify. But you want baseline and intervention data for multiple programs so that you get practice with this. Then looking at each graph, you're going to identify level trend and variability patterns for each graph during the intervention and determine whether or not this intervention is successful. So if I look at the graph and I see that we have a, a slight change in level, but it's been pretty stable, we don't have an upward trend and we're not at mastery criteria, then I would say this is not successful enough, right? It, there was a change in level, but the learner's not mastered the skill, so this is not successful yet. Then step three, describe future plans for the intervention based on the current progress. So if my learner has not met mastery criteria and I'm not seeing an upward trend, then I am going to go back. I'm going to check the IOA. I'm going to check the fidelity. I'm going to do a preference assessment. I'm going to reassess the prerequisites. You know, I'm going to check all of these things to make sure that this is accurate and, and the best way to teach for this learner and what else I need to change to help them be successful. Because if our learners are not making progress, that's on us. That's not the learner. That's on us. And we either identified goals that they're not ready for, or we're not supporting them in a way that they can make progress on this goal. So we need to problem solve um, how we can support the learner so that they can make progress. It's not on the learner, 
it's on us. So that's the assignment. Get baseline intervention data, identify level trend and variability, and describe what the future plans for each intervention would be based upon the progress. Now, um, as always, if you want to, you can put assignment answers or questions or comments down below in the comment section. Subscribe for uh, notifications about future topics, and hopefully we will see you next time. Thank you.